Chances are, if you enjoy name explain, you enjoy learning about all things words, language, name, etymology, and just fun trivia in general. And while YouTube is an absolute bastion of knowledge when it comes to language and words and trivia in general, there is another great way you can learn about stuff. And that is through books. Yeah, books, man, who'd have thought? Like, they're really cool things. I've actually been on a bit of a book binge recently, reading all kinds of different interesting stuff. And I thought I would make a video talking about all the books I've read about language and words and just trivia in general that you might enjoy too. If you enjoyed this channel, these books could probably be for you. And the reason we're making this video, it's because we've had a bank holiday here in the UK recently, so I haven't had time to make a full normal video. Normal production for again after this, but Honestly, this is a video I've wanted to make for some time now. There's some really amazing books about language out there. Some of them have very much heavily influenced the videos you've seen on this channel. I read books all the time for inspiration for videos and just researching videos in general. So, like I said, if you enjoy Name Explain, chances are you'll probably enjoy at least one of these books. And the first lot of books I want to cover are more reference books, and they don't get any better than this. This is the Oxford English Dictionary of English Etymology, and it's a hefty old tome. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's literally like a normal dictionary, as you can kind of see there, but every word, it gives you its etymology. This is from, when is this edition from? I'm not entirely sure, so I think it's entirely up to date. This was first published in 1966. I don't think this is the 66 edition, but yeah, this has every etymology of the English language you could want in a very concise manner. Let's find an example one, shall we? Uh, oh, that's a strange one. Messiah, Hebrew, title applied to promise delivered to Jewish nation, hence to Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff in there like that. That's a bit of an odd one. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. Sprit, boom or pole, crossing a sail diagonally. Let's say it's got all kinds of stuff in there. It's a big old book, that's for sure. It's definitely not one you're meant to read back to front, but like I said, it's a reference book. Just if you want to know a word's origin, it's probably in there. And if that seems a bit too big for you, well, luckily Oxford have your you covered. This is the Little Oxford English Dictionary of Etymology. Word origins even, blur. This is another great one. I actually owned this before I owned the big one. This is obviously much more concise. Kind of written like that, still a reference book. You could read it back to front if you really wanted to. It hasn't got everything in it. I think it's got things split into subjects. Yeah, so it's supposed to be in alphabetical. It's got like a chapter on body parts. It's got a chapter on home, stuff around the home. There's a whole chapter on punishment here apparently. So yeah, it does cover quite a lot. Nowhere near as much as this guy, but they'll both get you covered if you want to kind of just to know the bare bones of a word's origin. And carrying on with more reference style books, we have baby name books. I don't know if the camera's not picking those up as well. Yes, this is a hundred thousand plus baby names. This is the Penguin Book of Baby Names. So obviously these aren't really meant for etymology obsessed weirdos like myself or word name origin weirdos like myself. These are meant for expecting parents who want a good idea for a baby's name. They're there. Um, this one is the one I used a lot. This one I kind of used a lot in Fun With First Names. It was in the Fun With First Names introduction. It's a resoundingly well used book. I must be the only person on the planet who has baby name books but doesn't have any children. So yeah, um, what I like about this one is it's all very concise. You can just open it up. Uh, let's find the name in here. Uh, Connie, and it just says Connie here. And it says the name, English name evolved from a shortening form of constant. It just gives you a name and it tells you where it comes from, what it means. It's very concise and fun to use. And if you're an expected parent, I'm sure it'll be handy as well. This one, on the other hand, is a lot more beefy, 100,000 names. That one mainly focuses on the English language, so I'm pointing that there, because I threw it on the floor down there. I've got like a pile of books I've already talked about down there. This one's a lot more indentured, like uh, Kayla, form of Kayla, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. Battle from Arabic, you see what Arabic names, what German names, what Greek names. This is a lot more, a lot more names covered than it. Not as much information per name out there, but looks kind of cool, right? If you're expecting a baby or just want to know a bit more about names, both of these books would be pretty good for you too. Next up, I have a collection of reference books that cover more specific subject areas. So the first one here is a dictionary of British place names. Obviously that's more, if you're into Britain, that'd be good for you. Once again, it's exactly what it sounds like. Kind of like a dictionary, explains how British places got their names. So let's find a random one, shall we? Uh, Bishopton. Bishopton? 
Hello if you're watching from Bishopton, never heard of you, I'm sure you're lovely. Uh, and it says here it comes from the Bishop's Estate. That makes sense, Bishop Turn, Turn means town, Bishop means Bishop. So that's a really cool book as well, if you're into knowing where British places got their name. One a tad more specific is this one, the Book of English Place Names. So obviously this just focuses on England. This one actually isn't as referency. you could probably read this one back to front. It's got a lot more information on there, like there's a whole entry just on Colchester there for you guys. Um, I don't use these books enough in my videos, I often just Google things, I'm just sitting in front of my computer anyway. But they're terrific things, Lascard, well that's near where I am, Mosul, so yeah, oh, this is, <laughs> that's come on the area of South West England where I live, so that would make sense. It's even got extra bits in there, like here's a bit about St Michael's Mound, it's got a bit of extra information about saints in general. Really cool, this one is definitely more, is probably less reference and more, hey, here's a book about English place names you could read if you wanted to. That's a really great one. And then it's not all British stuff. I've actually got this wonderful book, The Stories of How Our States Were Named. This is a hefty old tome. This one's written by Kathy Guyton. So obviously, I haven't particularly mentioned authors on these ones because they're more referency books. This one has an author, this is Caroline Taggart. So thank you, Caroline. This one's Kathy Guyton. I actually got this one for free by the author. They reached out to me many, many years ago asking uh, if I'd like a copy and to talk about it in a video. I think I did talk about it in my Georgia country state video there. This one, once again, just talks about all 50 states of the USA got their names and it goes into quite a lot of detail. Like there's separate chapters on each state. That's the beginning of the chapter for Maine and it goes on for quite some time. Yeah, it's really rich in history talking about where they all come from. So if you want to know more about the states, because I haven't actually made a video on how all the US states got their names yet. This is the book for you. The reason I haven't made that video is I'm actually waiting to make it for when we hit $1,000 a month on Patreon. That's been my big target for many, many years now. So if you want to donate on Patreon and see that video, that could help. And this book would be handy in making that video, that's for sure. And I actually do have some more British stuff. This is some really particularly niche stuff. This book is The Old Dog and Duck by Albert Jack. This one talks specifically about pub names. So here in the UK, um, pubs have all kinds of strange names. The Elephant and Castle, the Dog and Bone. Dog and Bone, is that one? Yeah, maybe. All kinds of fun things that will cover them in there. Like I said, if you're interested in how pubs got their names, this is a pretty good book for you. And once again, this one probably could be read more back to front, but also if you just want to know about one specific pub name, you could just check that as well. And finally, this is a teeny tiny little book, but it's one I really enjoy. It's just called What's in a Name. It's written by Cyril M. Harris. And it's about how the tube stations got their name in London. So if you want to know how tube stop got their name, because there's some really weird tube stop names out there, this tiny little book will have you covered. Once again, it's much more reference style. It's got some fun pictures. You could just check a tube station. You could read it back to front if you want to, depending on how into trains you are, because I know some people love their trains. So now it's driving away less from reference books and more actual sort of book books you could read from back to front. And the first one of these kinds of books I have to mention has to be uh, David Crystal's A Little Book of Language. David Crystal is a English, I think he's English? I think he's Welsh actually. He's a British linguist. He's my favourite linguist. He's the guy who got me so deeply into language. When I was studying language at school, it was David Crystal's work I adored most. He's a wonderfully engaging writer. He knows literally everything under the sun about language. He's written quite a few books on language. I'm only suggesting this one here because it's, in all honesty, if you had to read one book on language, I would say it's this one. So this book just talks about all the different elements of language and linguistics as a whole. It's got a chapter on each subject. So there's a chapter on baby talk, um, from Christ to words, talking about a child language acquisition, which is something David Crystal's a big fan of. But that's something I studied when I was at college, learning about language. Talking about being bilingual, um, spelling. Each chapter of this book could have a um, book unto itself, but this is just a brief overview, a very engaging, easy to read, brief overview of pretty much every core element of language. I'd highly recommend it. Go read this, go read everything else David Crystal has done, go Google him, see what he's up to at the moment. He's he's terrific, I love David Crystal. Like, if you know about David Crystal, if you're David Crystal watching this video, cheers mate, You, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, cheers. There's some seagulls going mental outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but We'll manage, but I love to see you also, it's okay. The next book I have to mention is Bill Bryson's Mother Tongue. So if you don't know who Bill Bryson is, shame on you. No, no, no. Um, I don't know how well known Bill Bryson is around the world. He's an American author, but he's lived in the UK for an awful long time. 
He mainly does travel writing, but he talks about language a lot as well. And this is his book on the English language. So this one is specifically about English, covers its origins, its weird spelling, how it's changed all over the world. Um, Bill's a personal hero of mine, <laughs> along with David Crystal. Just, this is more just a re reference to just read anything by Bill Bryson because he's just a wonderful human being. I love Bill Bryson to pieces. If you're watching Bill, hello, cheers again, mate. This is a wonderful one. I haven't even read this one in quite some time. But yeah, it's it, it's terrific. It, everything Bill writes is absolutely beautifully written and just mm, genius. Um, I think a lot of other educational YouTubers refer to Bill Bryson as a hero of theirs. His most popular book is probably a short history of nearly everything, which does what it says on the tin. And I think people like CGP Grey um, have talked about how much that inspired them. It's it, A lot of Bill's books are kind of like YouTube before YouTube. It's in entertainment, edutainment, engaging content. God, I can't believe I'm just calling Bill Brighton's books content. I hate that word content. This is, this is more than content. He's a great author. Just if you like any kind of educational YouTube, there's probably a Bill Bryson book you will enjoy as well. And if you're into the name experience specifically, this is a good one. I think he's got one book on American English as well, which I haven't read. I probably should read that. The person here in the UK he's probably most closely associated with words and language, however, is Susie Dent. Susie Dent, I believe, works for Oxford Publishing in their dictionary sections. I'm not entirely sure if that's true. I might be making that up. She's most known, however, for being in Dictionary Corner in the TV show Countdown here in the UK. She is just like a bastion of knowledge for all things words and language and etymology. I think she's really popular on Twitter as well. She gives like a word of the day on Twitter. Um, yeah, she's terrific and she's written a whole slew of books on words and language and all kinds of things like that. If I have to suggest any of them, I'll suggest this one. This is Word Perfect, once again by Susie Dent. This is one of her more recent books, actually. I think it came out in 2019, 2018, potentially. It's terrific. So the gimmick about this book is it's got a word for every day of the year. This is in the front there. Etymological entertainment for every day of the year. Um, it's great. So each day, let's see if I can find today. What is today? The 5th of May? Luckily, I opened this up on the 30th of May. Do, 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 do. Am I gonna get sued for reading a book out loud like this? Sorry, Susie. Uh, is it the fifth today? Yeah, so the, day for the, for the word for the fifth day is cavalier, and it talks about why the word cavalier relates to the fifth of May and where that word comes from unto itself. What I really enjoy about this book, however, is if you struggle with reading, I know a lot of people do struggle with reading. I really struggle with reading sometimes. I find the motivation and the attention span to just sit there and read a book. It can be challenging, I understand that completely. I often audiobook a lot of stuff instead. This book can literally be read one paragraph or one entry a day, and you'll still enjoy it. In fact, it might even be better to read it like that, as opposed to just reading one big schlog. Um, yeah, it's terrific. It's a really fun book. If you want to know about some exciting words and interesting stuff, this is in there for you. Cheers, Susie, once again. I've been to a talk of Susie Dent once, a few, last year, two years ago? A while back, she did a talk here where I live, um, not in my house obviously, in the area where I live. And it was great, she talked about all things words and language, and what was really interesting about it, that was the first time I'd been in like a room of people excited about language, and there was someone on the stage, Susie Dent, talking about language and etymology, and people were like engaged with it. And that's quite hard to realise here on YouTube, that there are big numbers of people who are into this, and it made me feel a bit, a bit warm inside knowing that. Uh, there are people, there are actual real human beings out there who are into language. So once again, cheers Susie. Go read this book, then go read some others of hers if you want to. Next up, however, we have perhaps the most popular book on etymology out there. This is The Etymologicon by Mark Forsyth. You've probably heard of this one already. This is a resoundingly popular book. Like I said, it's one of the most known books on etymology, probably brought etymology to the forefront for a lot of people. This one, once again, talks about how words got their origins, but the unique gimmick with this one is each word talks and links onto the other from an etymological perspective. So it begins with one word, talks about where that word came from, and then how another word came from the same origin. That's why it's called like, it's called a circular stroll through the hidden connections of the English language. And they kind of all connect together. And then, um, spoilers for the end, I suppose, it kind of starts again. It's literally a perfect circle of etymology. It's terrifically written, it's terrifically researched, it's it's a terrific book. Once again, I haven't read this one in quite some time. I could definitely do a reading it again. Love this book. 
yeah, well done, Mark, because you've written, you've done more for etymology than I ever could babbling in front of this camera, that's for sure. Thank you. Here at Name Explain, however, our first love is names. And while these books I've covered so far talk about language and words in general and etymology, not many of them particularly focus on just names. Well, luckily, there is a book out there. It's called Hello, My Name Is, The Remarkable Story of Personal Names by Neil Burdus. This book is all about first names, about where they come from, what they mean, and last names as well, obviously. First names and last names, where they come from, what they mean, how they've evolved over time, their spelling and pronunciation. It's really good. I've actually written a couple videos inspired directly from this book. I believe the uh, video about why names change gender, that was very much inspired by this book. It talks all about that sort of stuff in here, about how a lot of names were kind of actually said aloud gender neutrally, like Philip could have been used for men and women. It was only when it was written in Latin, it became Philip and Philippa, and people started saying that out loud. If you remember that video, it was heavily inspired by this very book. It's a terrific one. If you're really into first names, this is the book for you, and you can read this one back to front. All of these books, my those references, the ones at the beginning, a much more enjoyed read back to front like that. Great book. Go read it if you can. A book more specifically about languages in general, however, is Lingo by Gaston Doran. This book is terrific. So this one particularly talks about unique quirks in various European languages. I think it covers every language of Europe, at least the big ones anyway, I might be wrong. It's only, each chapter's only a few pages or so. Talks about what's unique about that language in particular, where it came from, how it connects to other languages, what makes it so great. It's a terrific book. So this book particularly has inspired quite a few videos of mine. Um, the one that springs to mind straight was my video on Dalmatian. I did a video about the Dalmatian language and how it died in an explosion. Yeah, that's a true story. I learned about that directly from this book. This book was heavily inspirational in that video. I believe my video about the Basque language as well derived from this book and my video about the Maltese language and it being Arabic but being written in Latin was also inspired by this book. It's absolutely terrific. If you want to know more about the languages of Europe, this one's for you, definitely. There is, however, a follow-up book to it. Gaston Doran also wrote a book called Babel. This is very much a similar story, but instead of focusing on just Europe, it covers languages around the world, around the world in 20 languages. I actually can't say too much on it because I actually haven't read this one yet. It's been sitting on my shelf for ages. I just haven't had the chance to read it. It's definitely on my list. Maybe, maybe I should read it now. I imagine it's just as wonderful though. And then we have these two books. I don't know where they came from. Um, they're called The Original Names, Words and Everything in Between, volumes one and two. They're written by a guy called Patrick Foote. Um, they're all right, I guess. Like, they're okay. They're just, they just kind of just cover how things got their names in an engaging, easy to read, easy to understand way. Um, yeah, they're all right, I guess. Read them if you want to. I wouldn't put them too high on the list, but yeah, they're all right. <laughs> one book that inspired a whole video, however, was this one. This is Word Myths. Gosh, my camera is really not all I can pick these up. There you go. This is Word Myths by David Wilton, debunking linguistic urban legends. This book focuses on folk etymology about uh, the origins of words that are really popular, like how news means uh, notable events rather than sports, all kinds of things like that. It talks about all those sort of popular myths about words and language, about how Eskimos supposedly have a thousand words for snow, so Eskimos, Inuit people, sorry, I don't know what the correct term is there, but yeah, apologies about that, uh, how they have all kinds of different words for snow, and that simply isn't true. There's all kinds of stuff out there, and it only talks about why they're not true, talks about the more uh, popularly believed origin of those names and it also talks about why those myths propagate so well. Like I said, I've done a whole video about why uh, fake etymology spread so easily. That was directly inspired by this very book. It's a really terrific read. Joe, go check it out. Once again, I'm just gonna say that. I'll go, go check out these books. That's the whole point of this video. Though one of the densest books I'm gonna recommend for you guys today is How Language Began by Daniel Everett. Once again, I haven't read this book for a while and it is really quite dense. It's more of like a psychological, uh, biological, anthropomorphic origin of languages. This doesn't even talk about like how languages initially form. I believe it kind of ends around the point we began speaking. So it's really those very early origins about how language actually began. Um, yeah, it's a real dense one. Like, you know, it talks about all kinds of like pre 
human hominids, that sort of thing about their acquisitions of language and where it all ultimately came from. It's a bit more of a dense one, like I said, I actually struggled to read it quite a bit myself. I haven't been able to craft a video out of it yet because whew, it just went a bit over my head a little bit. But if you want something a bit more dense than kind of the more lighter reading I kind of suggested so far, I'd recommend this one. So not every book I'm gonna to cover today is actually about words or language or etymology. There's actually a couple just general history books I want to recommend as well. One of them being this, this is the history of the world in bite-sized chunks. It's a really little book as you can see and it's really engagingly written in tiny little uh, paragraphs you can just pick up and read when you want to. But despite being so small and compact and condensed, it does exactly what it sounds like. It covers the entire history of the world in bite-sized chunks. Um, the reason I particularly recommend this book by Emma Maria, by the way, I forgot to mention the author's name there, is because it's actually really influential for me. Um, when I got an offer to write my own books, I was like, mm, yeah, okay, I can try and write a book. I had no idea how to write a book, what kind of book I wanted to read. So I um, wanted to write even. So I went to Waterstones, a bookshop chain here in the UK, to find kind of inspiration for the kind of book my book could be. And I found this one, and this was actually a real heavy inspiration for the structure and layout and the readability of my own books. That kind of bite-sized chunks, engaging, easy, bam, 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 kind of reading thing. So yeah, if you haven't got the greatest attention span, like myself, but you want to know the entire history of the world, then this is the perfect book for you. Though, if there's only one history book I would recommend you read, if you had to read one history book in your entire life, I would actually recommend this one. This is by E.H. Gombrich, and this is A Little History of the World. This book blew me away when I first read it. It's exactly what it says. Like, it sounds like it's a little history of the world. It's absolutely incredible. So E.H. Gombrich is actually an art historian primarily. His most famous book is A Little History of Art. Um, but he wrote this one, I think, a little later on, or maybe before. It was definitely before or after the other book. That's how time works. It's actually written for children initially, and it's written in this most beautifully engaging way. It's so visceral in its description of certain things. And it just... What I love about this book, it kind of sums up my love for history in general. Uh, I think the importance of learning history is not just knowing what happened in the past, it's kind of understanding how the past shaped the modern world we're living in. And this book does that perfectly. It talks about all kinds of events in the past in history that kind of have resonations today and how one thing led to another, how like the Romans fell, what happens after the Romans fell and how that created the Middle Ages and then how the, how the Middle Ages created the Enlightenment and the Renaissance and formed into our modern world. Like I said, it's mainly written for children and it was written quite a while ago now. I believe it came out originally in the 30s. Um, does it tell me anywhere where this first came out? It should do somewhere. It says our first part in paper back in 2008. Uh, it definitely did not come out first in 2008, I can tell you that much. Oh, copyright 1985. This guy in the 80s? I feel like it was older than that. It came out at some point in the past, so it's not entirely up to date, but it's a terrific read. Like I said, if you just want to have a brief understanding of our world from, like, the beginning, and literally, I think it begins with dinosaurs and everything, I love that. If you want to know how our world got from, like, the beginning to about the mid-20th century, this book will pretty much explain it for you in a wonderfully engaging way. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. I might read it again at some point. And the final book I want to talk about isn't non-fiction. So yeah, obviously up until this point, all these books have been non-fiction books, which makes sense. I very much deal with non-fiction here at Name Explain. But the last book I want to cover is a fiction book and it's called Babel by R.F. Krang. Apologies about pronunciation there. K-U-R-A. Krang. Apologies about pronunciation there. Um, this book's incredible. I only read it fairly recently. I got it gifted to me um, a few Christmases ago. And like I said, I've been on an absolute reading binge at the moment and I finally read it. And this is the first book I found, the first fiction book I found that has language and specifically etymology and translation as a central focal point to it. And it's one of those books that made me feel so recognized. Someone writing about how exciting etymology and word origins and translation is in the realm of fiction was incredible. I'm not gonna talk too much about the plot of it. The general consensus, the general uh, plot outline, the world it's set in, it's set in an alternate reality history. It's set in the 19th century, 1800s in Oxford. And the general gimmick premise of the idea is that translations of words have power. 
uh, you can translate a word from one into another language and through various ways that the book explains, you can manifest that into being. So if you're like quick in Swahili and then quick in English on a bar of silver, that's how the book deals with it. It can make, and like then put that bar of silver on a carriage and then said it out loud, it can make that carriage go faster. That's a really oversimplified explanation of it. Um, it's terrific. It kind of balances between a whimsical Harry Potter style book about being in a magical school, the magical school being Oxford in this case, and kind of goes in all kinds of directions I didn't expect it to go. But if you want to read a fiction book about language, this is it. This is a, a, a terrific book. And I read recently the author, and uh, she's also written a ton of other hugely successful books. She's only 27. I'm so jealous. I've only written two vaguely successful books, and I'm almost 30. She's 27 and she's written some incredibly successful books. Very jealous. Well done, RF Crown. I'm, um, yeah, you've done, uh, this is, this, bleh, this is just, you know, the kind of book when you're just reading, you're like, oh my God. It's one of those ones. If you enjoy Name Explain and want to sort of celebrate language and have a fiction book about language, it goes into some other topics area. It gets really dark at points, but it's terrific. Go read it. I'm sure you might already have done if you're awesome. Maybe. I don't know. What do I know? But that is all the books I want to recommend to you. I'm actually going to start picking them up now. So I've got tons of books here. As you can see, lots and lots of books. Books are great. I freaking love books. Who would have thought someone who talks about names and words for a living would enjoy books so much? This is awful content right now. As I said, this is being made because we had a bank holiday here in the UK recently. I've got to put all these books back. But of course, this is only a small selection. This isn't even all the books I've read myself on language and words, or just history or facts in general. If there's any other books oh, you'd recommend, I'm trying to pick all these up now and put them all back in place. It's falling down on me. There we go. That will do for now. If there's, oh, that's falling. If there's any other terrific books on words, language, facts, trivia, you're interested in that I didn't mention here that I probably haven't read yet please go leave them in the comments and also if you do choose to read any of these books let me know what your thoughts are send me a message on some sort of social media or drop me an email or something about your thoughts on it because I'm always willing to hear your thoughts on books books I haven't read yet books I've read that I've recommended to you let me know okay I'm gonna try and put all these books back um hopefully I can remember where they go I'm just gonna drop them all on the floor now take care <laughs> That went awfully, <laughs> I moved my tripod and everything. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna sort this mess out. <laughs>